My husband, he used to tell me what I'd done the night before. And I learned when you wake up like that, you just say you're sorry. You just say you're sorry for what you did and you're sorry for who you are. And you're never gonna do it again. But you do, you do it again. I hadn't really gone to those sort of depths of despair before with my work and, um, and it was a challenge and it was stretching muscles I hadn't really experienced before. And um, at the end of the day, even if I don't agree with Rachel's ac actions, I learned to understand them, empathize with them, empathize with that idea of alcoholism and taking life setbacks harder than most. Under I, I, I also understand that voyeuristic tendency that she had, which is, to kind of live vicariously through others. I think it's quite relevant for a lot of people. Why are you really here, Rachel? Because I'm afraid of myself. I think people can relate to it to varying degrees. Certainly maybe not to the unhealthy extent that Rachel um, spies and obsesses over the seemingly perfect couple. But I love that idea, which is also a very cinematic idea of what we think we see and don't see. Um, and how dangerous that can be. Um, I thought it was such a cool idea. I saw someone with Megan Hipwell, but uh, not on Friday night. She, she was having an affair. She had a lover. That's that's what I'm trying to tell you. I thought you. you didn't know her. No, but I, but I saw her. You saw her where? I, I saw her from the train. She was standing on on the deck with this with man. Her husband, Scott Hipwell. No, it wasn't him. This man was different, and they, they were they were kissing. Wow, that's pretty coincidental, isn't it? Because she is an alcoholic and because she has an overact overactive imagination, um, she becomes the only real witness to this potential murder, but therefore the most unreliable witness. And she is the audience's eyes and ears in many ways. You see it from her perspective. It's her frame of mind that is your reference for it. And so the film takes on this confusing, blurred, eerie sense Frightening sense, because it's a frightening thing to not remember what happened. Do you enjoy cheating on Rachel? Seriously? We don't fixate on her. I saw her again today. Where? This afternoon, when the police brought Scott back home, she was across the street. This is an un unusual thing to have such multifaceted roles for women, three women in a movie, in a mainstream movie. Um, and I think we all were big collaborators. Everyone had a voice, everyone had a spirited opinion. And we were in an environment with, you know, Tate Taylor was very open to that, very open to hearing people's, uh, people's opinions. I am sorry, I was honestly just trying to help you. Know, you're Tom's crazy ex. Well, you're gonna tell me that, huh? And now the detective is asking if you and I are in a relationship? You? I would never even get near someone like you. My wife is dead. And you're lying to me. What's wrong with you? I find the movie quite spellbinding. I think it grips you. It is frightening. It is shocking. Um, and I want people to talk. I want people to leave and pick it apart and talk and go, Oh my God, you remember this? And oh my God, you remember that scene? Oh my God, you remember that scene? I want that.